what does it take to stand your ground, even against powerful and much stronger systems? One person against the evil systems that may be harming the greater community. Today's Liberating Faith Studies, Lesson 4, March the 28th, 2021, which is Palm Sunday, Elijah, Prophet of Courage. Elijah, Prophet of Courage. Our focus scripture is 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, verse 5 through 18. Our key verse, 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, verse 18. He answered, I have not troubled Israel but you have in your father's house because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and followed the Baals. That's 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, verse 18. Our reading for today, 1 Kings, the 18th chapter, verse 5 through 18. Then Ahab said to Obadiah, go through the land to all the springs of water and to the wadis. Perhaps we may find grass to keep the horses and mules alive and not lose some of the animals. So they divided the land between them to pass through it. Ahab went one direction by himself and Obadiah went another direction by, his, by himself. As Obadiah was on the way, Elijah met him. Obadiah recognized him and fell on his face and said, Is it you, my Lord Elijah? He answered him, It is I. Go and tell your Lord that Elijah is here. And he said, How have I sinned? that you would hand your servant over to Ahab to kill me? As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom to which my Lord has not sent to seek you. And when they would say he is not here, he would require an oath of the kingdom or nation that had not found you. But now you say, go tell the Lord that Elijah is here. As soon as I have gone from you, the spirit of the Lord will carry you. I know not where. So when I come and tell Ahab and he cannot find you, he will kill me. Although I, your servant, have revered the Lord from my youth. Has it not been told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel king killed the prophets of the Lord and how I hid a hundred, a, a hundred of the Lord's prophet, 50 to one cave and provided 50 to a cave and provided them with bread and water? Yet now you say, go tell your Lord that Elijah is here, he will surely kill me. Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, I will surely so show myself to him today. So Obadiah went to Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, is it you, you trouble, troubler of Israel? He answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you have in your father's house because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and followed the Baals. Today's lesson focuses on a crucial time in Israel's history. At this time, it seems as though worshiping the true God has been eliminated throughout the Northern Kingdom. There is a prophet who recognizes this rebellious spirit that was spreading um, and the deceptive idolatry that led them there. He recognized this and his name 
was Elijah. His name is Elijah. Elijah was a Tishbite who lived in Gilead. The name Elijah means Yahweh, my God. He is a vessel of God used to get rid of pagan worship and help align the kingdom back with God. And this week's lesson introduces us to a great biblical standoff between God's true prophet and the other false prophets and false gods. Now we will not touch on that standoff in today's lesson, but please read forward and read about this standoff. This is this great biblical standoff that, that we're talking about that will happen further as you read. Well, Elijah returned to face his nemesis, Ahab. Ahab was the king at the time. And under his leadership, um, Israel officially supported Baal worship as well as the worship of other gods. And even the name Elijah, the prophet, irritated this king. At the time, the land was going through a devastated drought and famine. This was, this was um, brought on by God and predicted by Elijah himself. The reason? The nations were in such, it was in such disobedience. And the leadership, the nation's leadership, did not, did not acknowledge God's law. This drought then came about. This drought was proclaimed to Ahab by Elijah in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, verse 1. And it says, as the Lord God of Israel lives, this is what Elijah says, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, except at my word. At this proclamation and prayer, um, there was no rain, which resulted in a great famine. Elijah, he, he escaped. And this also presented a season of struggle for, for the man of God, for the prophet. We, we all struggled. Elijah struggled at this time. He wrestled with his own physical and emotional weaknesses. He was visited by an angel who encouraged him to eat. Eat, because he was he was ready he was ready to die. He, the angel encouraged him to eat, and it directs him to Mount Horeb. It was on Mount Horeb where he had a divine encounter with God. Elijah is now in our lesson today. He was he is returning to proclaim the end of the drought and address the people's waver towards idolatry. This dis disobedience was led by Baal priests and it was directed by Ahab and his wife Jezebel. Jezebel was Ahab's wife and she sought to kill the Lord's prophets. This is what triggered, triggered that fear in Elijah. And this is what triggered that fear that led him into hiding so you can imagine the fear that Elijah felt and why his return to declare the, the end of the drought was such a bold move, was such a courageous move. As Elijah enters the region, he encounters Obadiah. And he instructs Obadiah to notify Ahab of his return. Obadiah is a servant of the king who hid 100 of God's prophet into two caves 50 in each, all the while providing for them, giving them bread and giving them water. Obadiah was alarmed by the idea that he would meet, um, meet Ahab and notify him that Elijah, the man who started, so-called started this whole thing, has returned. But once Ahab does meet Elijah, he calls Elijah out as a troublemaker for declaring the drought upon the land. What Ahab failed to realize was that is, is that it was his action and their disrespect for God that threw the nation into calamity. 
this happens happens throughout the Bible. God's messenger is uh, there that God's messengers are labeled as rebellious and troublemakers by the leaders at that time that they have they confronted. Elijah, however, he did not create this trouble, but instead it was Elijah who addressed the issue that caused trouble. The realities of today can be troubling just like those in Elijah's days. Like Elijah, it can be overwhelming. Yet God is able to provide comfort and reassurance for the present and the direction of the future. That may lead to opportunities to intervene and speak boldly for what is right. We need more people who are, will be advocates for change and be a voice to the marginalized. We also need to proclaim the true gospel of Jesus Christ. We do not need that, that the prosperity gospel or false prophecies, but instead we need authentic and relevant messages. We need the gospel more than ever today. You may be an Elijah preaching and speaking outwardly to everyone, big and small. Other, others of us, we don't have to be an Elijah. We may be an Obadiah instead, ready to protect and to defend the press against the injustice and be a li liaison for speaking the truth in power. Elijah. Yes, Elijah was definitely a prophet of courage. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the story of Elijah. Lord, we see in the life of Elijah that he boldly proclaimed your word. And Lord, when things got tough, yes, he too, he, 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 got, he became scared. He became afraid for his life when... Jezebel was killing off all the other prophets and he felt like he was the only one left and that she wanted him dead. He knew that. He became afraid and he hid. But Lord, thank you, Lord, for you speaking to us in our moments of fear. Showing us who you really are in, in our moments of fear. And just like Elijah, we can rise up and, and continue to do your work courageously. Lord, we even thank you, Lord, for Obadiah. Not, it may not be the prophet Obadiah, but Obadiah, the servant, Lord. Who thought it not robbery, who risked his life to protect and save many of those prophets. Lord, please help us to be courageous. Just be courageous in whichever way you need us to be courageous. Lord, that we, so that we, we that your gospel will continue to spread, so your justice will continue to, to reign. So your love and mercy will continue to shine. Lord, help us to be like Elijah. Help us to be like Obadiah and stand up against the Ahabs and the, and the Jezebels of the world. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this lesson. Thank you, Lord, for the truth that it speaks. Please, we ask in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <laughs>